Uh, good evening students. Uh, today we are going to solve an uh, example in moment of inertia. So the given problem is calculate the moment of inertia about xy axis. So in this problem the xy axis is given. Generally we used to calculate the moment of inertia with respect to centroidal axis but here they have clearly given that, that we have to calculate the moment of inertia about xy axis. So step by step we will solve this problem. So the step one, uh, we are taking the composite figure and then we are dividing into a known section. That is first one is triangle, second one is semicircle and then the third one is circle. The first one is triangle and the second one is semicircle and the third one is circle. So if we see the composite figure, we have the circle as a hollow region here. So based on that, we are going to calculate the moment of inertia about xy axis of a triangle, that is one, and then we are going to add the semicircle moment of inertia with respect to xy axis, and finally, we are going to subtract the circle moment of inertia with respect to xy axis. So we will see one by one. The next step is in the composite figure we are taking the first section that is triangle. So the height of the triangle is 100 mm and then the breadth of the triangle is 100 mm. So this is the centroidal axis which is parallel to xy axis. And this is the another centroidal axis along the y direction. So this particular point is nothing but centroid of the triangle. So if we have to calculate the moment of inertia about x, y, then we can use parallel axis theorem. So we know the parallel axis theorem is the moment of inertia about the x, y axis is equal to the moment of inertia of the triangle with respect to the centroidal axis plus area of the triangle and then the square of the distance between xy axis and then x x dash axis. So now we are going to calculate the h value. The h value is nothing but the distance between the xy axis and then x x dash axis. So this value, so we'll we already know that for the triangle it is 1 by 3 times of the total height. The distance is along y direction so I am taking this h is equal to y1 because this is section number 1. So y1 is equal to 1 by 3 of the total height of the triangle h1. So that is equal to 100 by 3. So now we can rewrite the equation as ixy1 is equal to moment of inertia about the centroidal axis of the triangle that is icg plus area of the triangle and then we can substitute the distance between these two parallel axes that is xy and xx dash that is 100 by 3. So now if we are substituting we know that the centroidal axis moment of inertia of the triangle is bh cube by 36. Here I am denoting as b1 and h1 so we are substituting as b1 h1 cube by 36 plus area is of bh for the triangle. So 1 by 2 times of B1 and H1 and then we know that Y1 square, Y1 square is nothing but 100 by 3 whole square. So once we substitute we will get IXY1 is equal to 8.33 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. So now we have calculated moment of inertia of the triangle with respect to XY axis. So now we are moving to the next one, that is step 3. Here we are going to calculate the moment of inertia of a semicircle. So this one is given, we have to calculate the moment of inertia about the xy axis. And we know very well about this, this is the centroidal axis xx dash, which is parallel to xy axis. And that this is another centroidal axis, that is y, y dash. And this point is over centroid. So again we are using the parallel axis theorem to calculate the moment of inertia. So here I am taking the section 2 so here it will be 
IXY2 is equal to centroidal axis moment of inertia of the semicircle that is ICG plus area of the semicircle and then H square that H is nothing but the distance between the XY and then XX dash axis along the Y axis. So again I'll repeat. So this is the H value that is the distance between the two parallel axes that is XY and XX dash. So here when we are calculating for the semicircle with respect to the base then it will be 4R by 3 pi. Because this is section 2 I am taking as Y2. So once we are substituting this value as H here. So H as Y2. So here IXY2 is equal to ICG plus A2 Y2 square. As I told you that ICG is nothing but the centroidal axis moment of inertia of the semicircle. So when we are substituting that the centroidal axis moment of inertia of the semicircle is 0.11 r power 4. So here the r is given as 50 directly we can substitute and then area of the semicircle you know that pi r square by 2 and then y2 square that is y2 we can calculate by 4 r by 3 pi. So once we are substituting these values, we will get the answer for IXY2 is 2.45 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. So now we got the moment of inertia of the semicircle with respect to the XY axis. Now we are moving to the next one. We are having in the composite figure as a circle. So circle, you know that this is the given axis where we have to calculate the moment of inertia XY. And we know very well that in the same axis only we will have the centroidal axis for the circle because the given axis XY and then the centroidal axis X, X dash are lying on the same line. And one more thing we know that the vertical uh, centroidal axis that is Y, Y dash is this one and then this is your centroid. So here the X, Y and then X, X dash does not have any vertical distance. So in the parallel axis theorem, the H value will be 0. So we know that the parallel axis theorem, IXY3 is equal to ICG. Here ICG is moment of inertia of the circle with respect to centroidal axis plus uh, area of the circle and then H square is nothing but the distance between two parallel axis that is XY and XX dash. So here H is equal to Y3 that is equal to 0 as I told you. Because both XY and then X, X dash axis are lying on the same line. So in this equation, so pi by 64, d power 4 is nothing but moment of inertia of the circle with respect to the centroidal axis. So instead of D, you can substitute 2R also. So R is given as 25, so D value is 50. And then area of the circle is pi R square. Anyway, the term will become 0 because y3 is equal to 0. So once you are substituting all these values, then we will get the value of moment of inertia of the circle with respect to xy axis as 0.31 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. So now we have calculated moment of inertia with respect to xy axis for a rectangle, semicircle and circle. So we are moving to the final step, that is step 5. So this is the composite figure and then we have divided this figure into triangle, semicircle and circle. So in the uh, composite figure you know that the triangle and the semicircle are added and only the circle is subtracted. So these are the 1, 2, 3 and uh, as I said earlier we are adding the triangle and the semicircle and then we are subtracting the moment of inertia of the circle. So now the IXY that is moment of inertia about the XY axis total is equal to moment of inertia about XY axis that is IXY1 plus IXY2 that is uh, moment of inertia about the XY axis of the semicircle minus moment of inertia of the circle with respect to XY axis that is IXY3. So once you are substituting the value that is IXY1 is equal to 8.33 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4 and then IXY2 is 2.45 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4 and once you are subtracting circle 
that is 0 0.31 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. So that is the moment of inertia value of circle with respect to xy axis. Then we will get the final answer as 10.47 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. So this is with respect to the xy axis. We have calculated the moment of inertia for the composite plane area. So now I am giving another uh, example for your homework. You can solve, uh, otherwise you can practice. So calculate the moment of inertia about AB axis and then CD axis. So you can see here. So AB now I moved down. Uh, that is with respect to the base. And then CD I have given in the right, right end of the figure. So with respect to these two axes, you calculate the moment of inertia. And then you can post the answers in the comment box. So all the best. Hope you understood. Have a nice day. Thank you.